Okay, everybody, welcome to the Tuesday <laughs> show for the final time. My name is Ultra David. This is James Chen. <laughs> this is not the final show, but the final time we got everything to work. Everything's now, so. working. Okay. All right. Yay. Okay. So we can okay. finally talk about stuff that we want to talk about now, right. including some new stream issues. Yes, and uh, what we did was we created some new. Did you mean stream issues or stream features? I think. Yeah, I think I meant news actually, but oh, then okay, okay. The, all the things that just happened right, were like right, forefront right, in my right, brain. Right. But and man, it just came out. So I'm anyway. I'm telling you right now that all the streaming errors make me very uh. angry. Uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, man. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, and all you do is just sit there and stare at me and smile, right? Yeah, that's so. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we have some great, new... Great stream, James. Honk, honk. <laughs> <laughs> we have some new uh, emotes now for everybody, so... Um, we're actually trying to work. So they're basically uh, Hong Kong Hulk smash, pot split, and uh, punish him. And punish him. So <laughs> punish him. Obviously designed for a very specific purpose here. But um, so dude, we wanted the sombrero, but the sombrero is too large. That's the only issue with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. In order to have any idea of what's going on, we would have had needed such a much larger remote than, than they would give <laughs> us that it just. Yeah wasn't gonna work out yeah, so we are working with uh twitch maybe to try to see if we can make two of them free and then the other yeah. two of them subscriber only but right now you can only use them if you're a subscriber unfortunately so so pot split is from texas showdown when there was that pot split and i was pissed about it mm -hmm. um and it can just i guess be used for however <laughs> whatever like douchey things you know that you want to make fun I of i think it'd be a good collusion replacement you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. That, that expression. Yeah, so. I definitely agree with that. Um, Hong Kong is just some jokes. If things are stupid or trolly, yeah. you can say Hong Kong. And Hulk smash, of course, I get mad all the time. So yeah. that's that's perfect for that. Yeah. And shout outs. Oh, I forgot who it was who captured that for me. But someone captured it and actually colored my face. Let me get his name. I'll get his name in a second. Okay. But, uh, uh, JT Barber, a.k.a. Uh, IPW Deuce, took the picture of me that I used for pot split. So shout outs to him. For that, I mean, for punish him, and obviously there is a, <laughs> you know, a pun in there too. So. That's right. That's right. So anytime I make horrible jokes, you are able to put down my trollish smile there. So. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that could be used whenever anybody makes some stupid pun or, or bad joke or something like that. <laughs> um, Pretty much. My so. my honk honk. That picture is from. Halloween of twenty eleven, maybe or twenty twelve. Where I dressed up as um, Ultimate Frat Guy, and I had two popped collars on, and you know, like pastel sunglasses or something. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. Yeah, Nintendo just sent out the link. You can actually see our Twitch emotes on yeah. Twitch.tv. So that's right on Twitch's sites. So that's right. So subscribe. Course, yeah, it's the... only for subscribers right now. Ding! It's only for subscribers right now. So if you want access to those things, you got to subscribe, and there should be a link somewhere in this region below my hands <laughs> uh, where you could probably find that uh, so please do that if you're interested there this is now like the major reason to do that kind of subscription uh -huh. we have people who have been supporting us uh, in the more direct route via PayPal right. uh, this is like the major reason to do the other kind uh, if you want emoticons mm -hmm. yeah I mean again you're not necessarily paying just to use emoticons you're paying yeah. to support us and you get the benefit of exactly. the emoticons because you know goodness knows we all make that you know Twitch CPM, whatever, you know. Yeah. Someone actually asked that question at the panel, which was amazing. Oh, yeah? They are like, Twitch doesn't pay anyone, so what do you guys think? And we're like, thank you for watching the stream. We will now be shut down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you but, brought yeah. up the uh, the PAX panel, so let's transition over into PAX. Yes. You were at Penny Arcade Expo this past weekend. Yes, PAX Prime in Seattle, which was very cool. It's the first time I'd ever been to PAX Prime. First time I'd ever been into Seattle, actually. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I really liked it there. I really liked Seattle there. It's a cool city. And I was lucky enough that I did not run into any rain. So. Oh, yeah? Was yeah. there mist or was there... No, it was like sunny and nice the, and Were beautiful. there clouds? The really? Whole, yeah, it was beautiful wow. the whole weekend I was there. Yeah, so it was uh, really, really nice. Okay. So... Well, uh, I've never been there. Uh, I was away this weekend, so I didn't really get to follow mm -hmm. that much of what happened, so... How did it go? Uh, how was your experience at PAX? You know, I, even even in addition to or, or separate from the, the panel that we'll get to. What? Right, right. No, I had fun at PAX. Um, 
it's definitely the new E3, right? Because now and anyone can go to an E3. They try to limit it to industry people, but I mean, it probably doesn't really work out that way. But, I mean, yeah. PAX is actually really cool. It's in a nice area of the city. It's, it's just, um, I don't know, like the atmosphere, the environment of it was really cool. A lot of really neat panels. I mean, that's one thing you don't get at E3 is like the kind of panels that you can attend to. Lots of little game tournaments as well, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. Um, I did not sign myself up into the Marvel tournament, but somebody else did, and really? so I had to play in the Marvel tournament. How'd that go? <laughs> it was single elimination. Oh yeah, it was single elimination. The monitors were slightly laggier. Than okay, the, I can tell by the, the by, by the excuse were. giving that uh, yeah, it was. But I won my first game. Okay, nice. And I was even able to land infinites what? on the slightly laggy TV. I was doing my Doom, Doom Infinite? infinites. Yeah. And so I beat the first guy 3-0. Nice. And then the second person I ran into was Ratana. Really? <laughs> yes. Like one of the old school expert Marvel 2 players. That sucks. Yeah, who's really been doing well in Marvel 3. Yeah, yeah. so I was just looking around the room. I was like, I don't see a lot of top... Of okay, I recognize Ratana. Oh, he's my second guy. <laughs> okay, great. That so, sucks. Yeah, yeah, so then I was taken out by him. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So I okay. went one and one. Okay. Which is... So if it was double elimination, I probably would have went one and two, and then I would have done my standard yeah. run back. But, you know, fortunately, because it was single elimination, I was 50-50. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. baby. Oh, so, that's right. Nice ratio. Yeah. Improving. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we attended a couple of panels and stuff and checked out a bunch of games. Dude, the indie game section is, like, the best place. Yeah. Like, seriously, the, the kind of stuff that people are coming up with the indie games in the indie game section is just, like, is, I feel like it's miles and above you know the stuff that regular studios are coming out with i, I mostly agree with that yeah yeah i i've done a little bit of reading on that and mm -hmm. i considered going to pax almost exclusively for the indie game yeah, section that's yeah, yeah. what i was really interested in it was so. really cool stuff so but then um i also i did i got to the dive kick tournament maybe like 10 minutes late so i didn't oh. get to enter okay but i stayed for the whole entire thing and it was amazing like it was ridiculous the amount of hype Oh, yeah? And the amount of people were there. There was like 140-some people who might have entered that or something like that. What? Yeah, and it was single elimination again, two out of three. Okay. But it was ridiculous. It was crazy. And um, it was just so funny because during the last match, I put a picture on Twitter. Of just everyone huddled around the TV of yeah. Sam versus Adelheid start yeah. in grand finals. I, I, I watched that. That's on YouTube. Dude, that I watched match that was set. so good, It was a right? really good match, It was yeah. so good. And uh, I, I, I basically sat down and had long conversations with Keats because well, he, okay. he didn't enter. He was just watching as well, right? Yeah. And we're sitting there, and yeah, I mean, it was... It's so funny, too, because, like, legitimately the room kept getting super quiet because everyone's just, like, super tense. It's a tense game. It really is. It kind of turned into, a, like, a little joke after a while. Everyone's like, shh. And every oh, time really? anything happened, they were like, golf clap, golf clap. And it was it was freaking hilarious, but it was hype. I mean, this this tournament was ending at midnight, and the room was packed, and everybody was surrounding that machine. It okay. was really cool. Okay. To see. It was I really mean, awesome. Those to grand see. finals were legit. It was S kill, uh, S kill versus dive, and that was some really good dive play. Dude, that Sam guy, he was he like, was really good. He was really surprised. Like he was just, like every time he would like w get around, he'd be like, "I didn't get frauded, yay!" But he was really was good. good. Yeah. And like a couple of matches that weren't recorded, like he was down and he just made these crazy comebacks. And dude, he did really well. Like there was one he was fighting against Jafali in semifinals, and the Jafali went up three zero, and then he just straight. Like five would him after really? that, and he won five three on that one set. So it was really really cool. Okay, it was really really cool. So, but yeah, no, dive kick was super exciting, super hype, and it was fun just having Keats there because like stuff would happen. Everybody everybody would be like, "This is your fault, Keats." <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, like a hitbox would hit wrong. Yeah, Keats, a weird hitbox. Yeah. Yeah, Keats was like, "Who made this crappy game?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was actually kind of funny. So, but yeah. It was, it, the dive kick tournament was super hype, so that was exciting. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, um, I was there for the panel, which I basically just did right because my flight was delayed on Friday night. I didn't get in until 2 a.m. Wow. And the panel was on 1.30 p.m. that day. Oh, damn. <laughs> so I slept, woke up, went straight to the panel. So and, what was uh, this? What was this panel? Uh, basically, it was just kind of like, uh, let's just talk about the fighting game community, and we kind of wanted to talk about, just from the perspective of the people on the panel, you know, 
some of the, the positive things that we've been doing because there's been a lot of negativity in the fighting game community recently, right? I, I was actually kind of more of the mindset that I wanted to just jump right into the negative stuff and just ta mm. tackle it and talk about it. Yeah. You know, especially because we're at PAX and it was streamed on the main PAX, well, the secondary PAX stream. Yeah. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to address a lot of the issues. But, you know, to be honest with you, we were going to try to open it up to as much Q&A as possible. Yeah. And I just kind of knew within my heart a lot of those issues were going to get brought up mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them did. So okay. that was actually really, really cool. Okay. So um, we got some pretty good questions asked. And um, I tried my best not to skirt around any of the issues okay. i try to address a lot of them straight up um like one person came up and was like hey you know this perceived sexism in the fighting game community do you think it's just a result of just the aggressive nature of the fighting games and you know and i was i just basically came out and said it. i was like sexism is a huge problem in the fighting game community it's a very big problem women and transgender uh people and you know those those um, marginalized groups feel very scared to come into the community a lot of the times. They do feel threatened. I mean, you got to imagine what a what a woman feels like when she's like, hey, this looks kind of cool, and starts reading the stream chat, and then, like, Sherry walks on the camera, and then it's just like, why do I want to be a part of this? <laughs> yeah, I hear it. You know, yeah. so hopefully, um, hopefully what will happen is that, you know, this will be archived, and then we'll supposedly we're supposed to be able to do anything we want with the archive hmm. so um i think uh mark man wants to put it up on the mad cats channel uh gutex will probably put it on the cross counter channel and we could still do our commentary version if you want <laughs> certainly so what yeah. were some of the other questions that were asked what were the other, the other topics that you guys addressed you know uh one person asked for example about like twitch cpm and everything and you know a lot of us kind of just came from the viewpoint that you know Twitch is still providing a service that very few other people are. And well, what, what was what was the question? Mostly just like, I forgot exactly how it was worded, but it was just like a lot of people aren't making money off of Twitch. Mm. Like, how do you, like, what would you balance between, you okay. know? And so, you know, a lot of people were defending Twitch, you know, basically saying they're the only ones that do provide this service, right? And, and if... Twitch doesn't make any money, then we have no service, right? Yeah. So right now, they're probably not in a position to pay their streamers well right now. And a lot of other people, like Gutex was mentioning that, you know, a lot of it comes down not even necessarily to making money directly off of Twitch, but off of branding, you know, off of, you know, trying to... I mean, as, as a streamer. Yeah, as a streamer, yeah. as a streamer. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So. yeah, um, I mean, it is a problem. So yeah. they don't pay very much. No. It's no, true. Not at all. So it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was an oh another question someone asked was just like, how do you balance practicing for the game and school and stuff like that? You know, how important mm. is school and stuff like that? Now I I have to take a little offense to what how Gutex answered this question because it w really frightened me in a way. Okay. okay, we were sitting there talking and he's just like I graduated from college. This is basically good text. It's like, I graduated from college, but you know what? You know, college didn't help me get here, like, at this moment in time. Like, it didn't help get me to where I am. Uh-huh. And so, I don't know. He was kind of... I sounded like he was insinuating that school wasn't useful. Right. <laughs> in a weird way. Right. And so, I was like, um, college 100%. <laughs> got me here at this table right yeah, now. Yeah. I was like, my job allowed me to travel. Right. It allowed me to buy the capture card that I got when I was a wee child in college and start making combo videos. That's right. You know, um, everything that I've... And then I also mentioned that just going to school helps you with cognitive learning. It helps you think smarter and just do all sorts of other things that'll help you in your fighting game and i basically said if you have a choice between the two you stick with school <laughs> there is zero doubt about that yeah yeah i mean i i learned how to think really well in in college but especially in law school that's like what law school is for it's not just to like memorize whatever law and stuff it's to think and i began i became a better fighting game player 
during law school because I learned how to think critically yeah, in a uh-huh, better uh-huh. way. Exactly, um, exactly. I, I feel like, and I learned how to speak a little bit better too, and I learned how to formulate my thoughts a little bit better, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that is like <laughs> massively important to yeah, me I mean, doing this thing that I'm currently doing right now. Dude, so. I said, I said, it's like a, it's like a give and take. Like school will make you a better fighting game player, and weirdly, fighting being a good yeah. fighting game player makes you a better. That's true. A uh, student and a better person in the workforce. Yeah, so. I, I I agree with that. That's a surprising answer from Ryan. That's too bad. Yeah, but um, uh, and then of course there was, like I said, there was that earlier sexism question. But then the main sexism question came up, which basically closed out the entire uh thing because it it took up so much time. Really. And uh, a young lady stepped up to the mic and basically started asking about how we can change. The, 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 the sexist nature, the misogynistic nature of the fighting game community. What, and, like how, how to go about that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was talking about how women do feel threatened in there. You know, obviously, you always got to bring up the cross assault incident, right? Sure. So she brought up the cross assault incident a little bit. And um, she also brought up, you know, the Mad Cats advertisements directly to Mark Man. She was like, I love you, Mark Man, but, you know, like, we're more than just, you know, joystick models. There's all these amazing women players out there that don't get any play, you know, and every time they do, it's really bad. And you can tell she's, she's happened, she, she must have gone through something herself because she got very emotional about it and she almost cried, like, standing there on the spot and such. So, you know, she just basically asked about that and... She, she had her own negative experiences in, yeah, the, in yeah, the FGC. Well, I mean, that's, that's what I'm gathering. Yeah. I, that's just for judging how she was re- sure. reacting up there, you know. And so, I don't know, like, I was really glad she asked that question. Yeah, it's an important one. it was something that I really, really wanted to talk about. You know, I think it's probably one of the biggest issues because, you know, you're standing there in a video game convention, right? You're standing at, I'm standing in PAX Prime, and you look at the crowd, and you look at the audience, and, you know, everyone, this whole video games are for guys thing, you, you just stare at a PAX Prime crowd, and you know that that is absolutely not true. There are so many women at PAX Prime. I mean, it's okay. it's like 60-40, maybe even closer than that. Okay. You know, it's 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 very well balanced there. I mean, and I know the fighting game community just happens to be like one of the extremes. It's like, definitely not 60-40. <laughs> like 95-5 maybe mm. or something like that. So, you know, I definitely do think it's a problem. I yeah. think it's a huge problem. And, you know, the, the point that I tried to make during both of the sexism, sexism questions was, I think one of the issues right now is that, you know, a lot of people ask us, you know, what are we supposed to do for the fighting game? How do we make it more appealing to women, right? And my response uh, literally was, you know, we don't know. We're not the people you should be asking. Yeah, that's a good point. It's really the women who should be helping make the fighting game community more appealing to women. So what I was saying, what the men need to do really is get more women into positions of power. Were there any women on the panel? I, no. don't, I don't really know. No, no there was yeah, okay. no women on the panel at all whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, so you're, you're literally asking <laughs> seven dudes, yeah. right? And like... I, I joked afterwards, you know, like off off the panel. I was like, dude, giving my dating history is obvious. I don't know what women want, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, so yeah. it's just like none of us, dude. Like seriously, like we were the wrong people to ask. So, you know, next time, I mean, honestly, we need to get more women on the panel. I know on Pax East we tried to get women on the panel, and that didn't turn out very well. But you know, and this time, I I don't even think any of them were asked. You know. And, and it's unfair to, to ask the women to step up and say, hey, can I be on the panel? Because most of the people on the panel didn't have to ask to be on the panel. Yeah, absolutely. They were invited there because they were there, right? right? So, like, if we only had five people on the panel, Hoshin was around, we probably would have said, hey, Hoshin, want to come on the panel? You know, and honestly, we need to get, we just need to be more proactive about it. So, I think it's a huge problem. I think it's a problem that needs to be addressed, not just for women, but for transgenders and, yeah. and all sorts of things and we just need to be more inviting and, and get to a point where it's just not like it's it's a threatening atmosphere it is a threatening atmosphere for i think a lot of the marginalized groups and it's hard to see if you're not a part of it you know yeah it's not it's not like a an easy thing to develop um empathy for for that kind of thing mm-hmm. um 
it certainly took some work on my part to, to start noticing things. Um, I'm from a totally different socioeconomic and racial background <laughs> than a lot of people who are, who have, you know, uh, 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 more kind of marginalization issues in the FGC. Um, and so it's not necessarily easy. And I feel like that's, that's something that limits people from thinking about it in a better way. So I wish that there were more opportunities and I guess we can make those opportunities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's the important point is that we can make those opportunities. I know it sucks to be like the, the token member of whatever group. (laughs) Um, Here's the woman on the panel, for example, right? Right. I know that kind of sucks, but on the other hand, uh, I wish that, well, again, we have to, we have to make that happen. I mean, there's no wish about it. We have to make that happen. Somebody has to do that. That's just the role that somebody has to play. Right. right. Um, And that's, and, you know, once that does happen, it's going to be on the rest of us to to empathize and to mm-hmm. and to take what what those people say as as the truth. I mean, it's it's again, it's very easy for somebody in my position and a lot of people who are watching to say, oh, it's not like that. Or like, <laughs> it's not that bad. I see plenty of women Come in on. the community. They don't yeah. seem threatened yeah. at all, yeah. you know. But it's just it, that's not how it is in, in reality for them. And you mm-hmm. have to kind of trust them that they're not making it up. Yeah. Um, cause it's easy for us to ignore. So again, got to make that happen. People have to understand better and, and think about it better and empathize better and, and all that stuff. So it's yeah. definitely a major issue. I agree. I mean, the interesting thing about it is there actually are a lot more female players that people don't know about, you know, um, that's true. Uh, I did speak to the, the, the young lady who asked that question after the panel. I talked okay. with her a little bit and, uh, she was talking about a lot of women that players that she knew that were very strong that just don't get enough play. Okay. Um, hell down here in SoCal. I mean, like everybody knows about Sherry, obviously, right? But a lot of people don't talk about Stacy. Tanya That's true. Yeah. Tanya, yeah. Miller time. She's good. Dude, at ST, her man. ST game has stepped up so badly, <laughs> dude. She eliminated me out of that team. Well, of course, she was using Honda, but still. <laughs> but you know, she eliminated me out of the yeah. out of the tournament at Evo for for that uh, for the which tournament was it? it might the have character. been just a standard tournament, oh, really? actually. Yeah. So. Oh, no, it was. You're right, you're right. It was, right. The, it was, the, it was the ratio tournament. The ratio yeah, tournament, yeah, yeah. Because I don't know how to fight Honda with Vega, dude, so she blew me up, so that right. fight was bad. So, But, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of there's a lot of women out there who are really good. I remember when we went to Texas Showdown, there was that one girl, the one lady who made top eight in Tekken. That's right, yeah. Right? So there's just there's so yeah, many. Obviously, obviously, there are good players. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And it just they need to get more play. The worst thing about it is when they come on, the stream and then everyone has to just start like like even just right there right some people are all you know already being yeah what a douche why would you bother come, come on. on come on olaf i'm calling you out right now call dude. out call you out right but being a dick come on exactly dude and you know and some people are like oh monica versus sherry money match dude who cares about women playing women you know you don't need that that's not we don't we're not here to find out who the best female player is we're here to find out who the best street fighter player is so yeah yeah, it's not that much i definitely agree with that um and you know being at pax i feel like cast this a little bit into further relief uh people have probably heard about the whole nonsense with gabe Right. Oh yeah, 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 with Mike Rahulik. Mike Rahulik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, where he okay, so they had a they had a comic that like basically in the end the, the punchline was a slave talking about getting raped to death by Dick Wolves. Raped to sleep. Raped to sleep. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I mean uh, the, the comic was about how callous a player is to an NPC like all the time. Like mm-hmm. if some if you like do a quest and you complete it, you don't care about the rest of them. Right. Um, I I am inclined to give. My my threshold for uh, for being offended at somebody who tells a joke is really high. It takes a lot <laughs> for me to get offended if I know somebody's trying to tell a joke. Uh-huh. But after that, you know, they really like double down on like so, supporting like the idea that like yeah, a lot they, of people, it's okay to you know, yeah, anyway. a lot of people got mad at them yeah. and they were just like, we don't understand why you're and you know at that point yeah okay there was maybe a little. It's not a direct rape joke, whatever. Yeah. You can make all these, uh, you know, excuses and stuff yeah. like that. But then what they decided to do was create a Team Dick Wolves shirt yeah. and sell it on their merch store, yeah. <laughs> which uh, really got people angry, and eventually they took it down. Yeah, um, and, and then I guess this weekend, 
Well, even before that, Gabe got into a little trouble with the whole concept of transgender. Right. He was just like, you know, if, a, if, if you have a penis, you're a man. If you have a right. vagina, you're a woman. There's like no question about that, right? Yeah. It's science, whatever. And, you know, the, the whole thing is about the whole, you know, um, community now. It's like you basically, the, the, the norm now is to be referred to as what you want to be, what you see yourself as, right? <laughs> So uh, a lot of people got mad at Gabe for that. And he's just like, I don't understand. And like, he's like, I have plenty of trans. I have a transgendered friend. Like, I don't hate them, you know, but it just like, it just came off wrong. And uh, he, he got a lot of people angry about that. Yeah. Know? I mean, it's one thing to have a friend who is of whatever group and it's mm-hmm. a little different to treat the group as a whole in a certain way or to have in a nice way to have, um, you know, kind of a more open mindset. It was just a weird comment for him to make. And he kind of doubled down on that one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So um, anyway, there are, there are these issues with Penny Arcade uh-huh. and by extension with their expo with PAX um, relating to uh, rape and women and transgender community. Uh, so I just think it's really interesting that you guys were talking about <laughs> yeah. a couple of those things at, at the fighting game panel, a, a community that, again, if we're going to be honest, has issues with that stuff yeah, 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 yeah. itself. Like, mm-hmm. that's definitely an issue for mm-hmm. us, too. So. And also, too, I mean, they had a lot of really good panels there. There was a, a gender equality panel, you know, trying to be more open to other genders. There was also a game like a girl panel, which was an all-female panel group, um, just talking about, you know, how... It, why it's so hard to be a female in the community, in the video gaming In video community. gaming in general. Yeah. And of course, you know, they were thinking about not necessarily supporting Penny Arcade Expo, yeah. but then Gabe on the last day, uh, well, yeah, it was Gabe, uh, so Mike Krahulik, they were being interviewed by Robert Koo, their their publicity manager, I yeah. guess, you know, and um, he asked them what, they, what was the one thing they've regretted most, <coughs> and Gabe's response was that he regretted taking the Dick Wolves shirt off of the merchandising store the most. And he feels like that was the biggest mistake. Yeah. And so that just erupted a whole bunch of uh, more negative feelings towards them. So, Yeah, they have some issues of their own to deal with. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, so, yeah. <sighs> anyway, anything yeah. else you want to talk about on this, uh, on this topic? I mean, honestly... It's a topic that we've talked about many times and people continues just to be an issue. People just need to be more accepting. And we just have to start treating women more normally like the problem with it now is like whenever a woman comes to the fighting game community they have to prove themselves right so um i forgot what it was i think it was on uh wednesday night fights a few weeks ago uh miranda was on there and she was playing and everyone was just giving her such a hard time on how she was playing now miranda's not a bad player right she just wasn't on her game that particular day but the people were just like extremely mean to her You know, like, oh, she's terrible. What? She can't even do this? Blah, blah, blah. You know, like, oh, she can't, you know, oh, that was a weak punish, whatever like that. And, you know, yeah, people get on other people's cases, but not to that degree. And we just have to start treating females who sit down, or women who sit down and start playing these games like other people. You know, it's hard, obviously, because we're dudes, and dudes are going to be dudes, right? But... That doesn't mean, that's not an excuse to be, you know, um, insensitive to them. Yeah, just got to try to put yourself in the other person's shoes, man. Right. You got to think about it in, I guess, like Rawls, um, this political theorist. And basically, he he says that um, the way that we should design the system that we're in is kind of with a veil. So pretend that you're making the rules without knowing where you're going to end up. Mm-hmm. in the system are you going to be the president or are you going to be a janitor you don't know make the rules based on that knowledge that oh, you can right, end up right, anywhere right, 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 right. Uh-huh. Just, but just try to just try to do that i mean yeah try to put yourself in somebody else's shoes mm-hmm. trust them as to how it is don't don't <laughs> belittle them and don't belittle you know how they view things I mean, that's the key, man. Yeah, you gotta, you yeah. gotta try to empathize. And, and here's another thing, right? Like, I, I jumped into the stream and I was like, it's ironic to me that something called the stream would have so many thirsty dudes in it, right? I mean, that's basically what I put in the chat, and everyone was like, ho, 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 whatever. And then everyone started getting mad at me for trying to defend the women in the stream. And they're like, James, don't lie. Before you had a girlfriend, you were probably just as thirsty as the rest of us, right? 
And you know what? I can honestly say, sure, maybe I was as thirsty. And I probably was as thirsty as everyone else. But I don't have to be a jerk about it. I'm still going to respect people. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know what yeah. I mean? yeah. That's the whole point, right? Like, yes, you're a dude. You see a hot girl on the stream, you're going to, you know, be like, oh, she's really cute. But, dude, don't disrespect him. Don't sit there and go, she's a hot girl. She must know nothing about fighting games. Yeah. So, you know, she must suck kind yeah. of thing. You know, dude, just just like, yeah, there's, there's things that happen, you know, natural urges, whatever you want to call it, whatever like that. Dude, mind over matter, dude. Seriously. Just put yourself in the other person's shoes, yeah, man. All people. Yeah. All, All right. right. I mean, as best you can. you got to trust them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. It. Okay. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about video games. Okay.